So now we're gonna start on a 2017 um, Chevy Silverado 2500 HD with the Duramax. We have a cat code. So I've already looked at it. What it tells you in the testing is to make sure there's no aftermarket uh, stuff, no damage to the engine or anything like that. I don't see nothing wrong with this. So what I mostly see common, this is an LML. I believe it's still an LML because it's a 2017. Um, it's not an L5P. But the, there's a ninth injector that likes to get plugged up the tip of it. The injectors actually up here, but the nozzles down in the exhaust like to get plugged up and what it'll do is it stops spraying. And when it goes into regen, it won't spray the diesel fuel and heat the cat up and the, the truck will think the cat's bad. So we're just gonna go ahead and check that and make sure that is a problem. So first we're gonna start pulling all these fender liner bolts. And so um, some of them are already loose, which is nice. So they're all T15. So we're gonna start ripping these out. One. There's quite a bit of food. Someone must have did the fuel filter because you have to take these out and do the fuel filter. I mean, you might not have to, but sure, I do it. And I don't like taking everything apart, but it's tight. Pull truck cover good. It's always nice, and they're torques too. That one's full of mud. Might be some brake tank for those. So there's two more right here. One right there. I gotta get some brake clean for these. Okay. Okay, now with the flashy light, it should be, it's this back here, it should be a 22. Right. Now we gotta go pick up that uh, Ford. Yeah. Bite 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. You have Augustine do it. Okay. Augustine. Or, I'm sorry, Ricardo. Okay. Scan what? <sighs> That's kind of moving. Loosen it by hand. Okay, there's that. Now you're not gonna be able to tell if it's bad like this. Let me go get the scan tool ready. Takes a little bit. Okay, so I'm commanding it on, but the problem is we don't have any fuel pressure. Stick it right there. Should have a good spray pattern. Let's try that again. So now we're gonna start taking it apart for this ninth injector. So this is what it looks like. See so the injector, the pipe, the nozzle. This is what gets plugged up all the time. I was able, I've cleaned them before, but it usually doesn't last. It's not worth it. Get those two clamps off. to the grid of it. Set the light up. Oh, he's gonna... Yeah, it's right here, right in the good part. Sorry. Okay. So, let's see if I can find it. So this is the ninth injector down here. It's kind of hard to see under everything. Right here, as you see the electrical connector. It's gonna pull up on that tab. It's like a Chrysler locking tab, which I hate. It didn't break, that's always great. Then you can push down. I usually try not to push down because I find that's when I break them. I try to get a reach around. See, I popped it. It's like so. It's like that, bam. You don't want to put it too much, put too much pressure on it because then you will break it. And then there's usually two 13s that hold it in. There's one right here, there's one over here, and then there's a couple tens down there. Um, I usually use a little red gear wrench. So let me grab a little gear wrench. And then I think we're pretty good.
So we're gonna go all the way down here. I don't know if you guys can see. Yeah, let's start with this one. So might be easier to do from underneath to the fender well. So there's a 10 right here. There's one. It's not out, it's just loose. We'll get everything up here loose and then we'll go down there. And then you have to, you have to disconnect that number eight injector as well, the connector. Um, see someone's already been playing in here. That's not even in its clip. It's EJR cooler line. Okay, now, we gotta get this fuel line disconnected. So we're gonna pop this off. Get the black piece off. I don't like dropping it down there. I think it's right here. There's that, I think that's the lock. There's the new one. Maybe it's the release. Oh, it is the lock. So, truthfully, I don't know how to get these off. So what I do is I take a pick and I break them out. So I get my picks, I have these two. You can see, this one I use a lot, it's all bent. Uh oh, how's it going? How you doing? Good. Long time no see. You guys look like you're busy over here. Yeah, every day. <laughs> every single day. That's good, I guess. Yeah, somewhat. If we could find more people, it wouldn't be a problem. Oh, is that? Oh yeah. That an issue? Trying to find people and get. It's get, tough, I know, right? Oh yeah, you can't find nobody right now. Yeah. It's, it's everywhere, man. Like yeah. Today. Oh, I believe it. Freaking, even at work, it's hard to fucking find people. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly what we're talking about. Uh-oh. Then you break it out like that. And then we go right here. Now I'm sure there's a proper way to do this. Um, and I don't think this is the proper way. Truth be told, I don't think I've ever looked it up how to do it. But this clip is in the new one. So I usually just, this is how I've done them. I've done probably 20 of these like this. The clips usually just pop right out. They're usually not too bad of a fight. So I feel comfortable with that. Now we're gonna get the 13. All my extensions are worn out. I gotta start warranting them. Do the snap on guy. Now that we have somebody that actually comes to us every week. Yeah, see? Okay, so we're gonna disconnect this. Uh, this is the EGR cooler bypass valve. We're just gonna disconnect it so it's out of the way. This, just this wiring. These are a bear to change. The next one that I get. Bad, but I'll be doing a video on it. Cause you gotta take this, pretty much the top of the engine apart to do it. They're actually quite easy. They pay like 13 hours, which is nuts. Cause they are, they are a pain. Um, let me go grab a magnet. We'll get that. Okay, magnet time. So. That was a Machu Picchu. I figured you did it once, now you can do it again. <laughs> Check in the box, it might be. I don't think so, but. Okay, crap, I'm dropping everything today. It's been a crazy day. So I've only, this is my second video I think I've done today, second recording. I usually like to do a few, but today I just haven't got the opportunity. Okay, now we're gonna get the bottom 13, so we already got the top one. Okay, it's loose. I usually leave it like this and I try to grab it. Because it is, like I said, it's kind of a pain. It's kind of buried and it's kind of hard to see. Let's see, I want to make sure this line pops out. These are very fun sometimes. 
Ow, right in my finger hole. <laughs> I've smashed my elbow today. Poke my finger. Go like so. I usually try to do things the right way, but I think you have to have a special tool, but I'm gonna have to actually look it up. Cause now I'm just talking out my butt. And the line just, it just pops right out. You can see it's starting to come out. As you can see in the new one, it has a white, so it already has that in there, so we're good. Now we need to go down there and disconnect the tens. Let's go down there. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. We fixed the ninth injector. I'm trying to get a good shot. It's oh, this one's actually not too bad. <laughs> There's not very, not very much room on these. So this one's actually a little bit easier than the earlier ones, I think. I don't think they're different, but the earlier ones, I thought there was something back here that is a fight. But maybe I'm, I don't know, I must be tripping. But this is, I don't know if I said, I think I said a 17 is actually a 15. Because if it was a 17, it would have been L5P. Can you bend that out of the way a little bit? You want to make sure you put this thing back in the back way it came out. So we're going to go ahead and... Give her a little tug, go like so, comes right out. I'll make it look easy sometimes. Make it look like I know what I'm doing, but thank you YouTube. Not. <laughs> Watching YouTube to make YouTube. Wish. Okay, so let's get the new one in. Yeah, I got the new one. Now the problem is the clip broke on the one I was trying to take off. I was trying to take, there's a clip. There's a clip that goes, I think it goes right here that holds the current right in that book. So I'll probably just put a piece of hose in the zip tie or something. Okie dokie. Now I want to show, show you guys what it looks like when it's all done. Well I'll show you what it correct what the injector's supposed to look like properly. I'm gonna go up top and pull it under that. So the top setting, place. Get the bottom in. Try to get it tight with my hand. I'm not going to screw this in because I want to see the after effect. 
So since we got that in, we can go ahead and bend this back down into place. Plug in the numbers, numbers number eight injectors. Make sure all that looks good. Now we're gonna go back and pop it up. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Now we're back up here. Now we got two 13s. They're both the same exact 13, so it doesn't matter which, wherever which one goes. Okay. Gonna get that one in. And then we're gonna, this, this one's kind of a, let me see. Let's see if I can get my meat claws in there. Oh, I don't want to drop it. <laughs> this truck only has, I think, like 60 or 70,000 miles on it. This is definitely the earliest one I've ever changed on one of these. Usually about 150, 200,000 miles is when I see these. Maybe this one has a lot of idle time on it. I didn't know. Okay, that one's torqued to spec. When the ratchet stops spinning, it's torqued. That's how you can tell. Okay, we're gonna have to go around the AC line. And we're gonna have to go this way. The injectors facing the wrong direction, so we're gonna turn it. And you know, don't have to worry about turning it. You're not gonna hurt it because there's rubber O-rings inside. Okay. Now the two 13s are tight and my socket is down there now somewhere we're not i don't want to i don't really want to sacrifice that socket to the duramax god just yet see you later jim so i got a, a call or an email from the guys wheel place that the lead time on the stuff now is four to six weeks for Calhouns. <laughs> so now I found it on uh, eBay. It's actually cheaper for the bag kit. Okay. So I found it on eBay, but I gotta call the company and, and have them. I, I might need your card. Okay. Just to have them put it back on it. That's fine. Oh yeah, because you're just canceled now. Yep. Okay. So. And you gotta make sure you plug everything back in. So I got the 10 in in the back. There's only two 10s. The bottom one I already did, I did outside. And that one I just did, the two 13s are tight. We have the EGR bypass right here. And then we have the, this is the indirect or a ninth injector. I call it the ninth injector. That's what I first started calling it, but it can be considered an indirect. They also call it that. I think that's what they actually call it. Um, so we have that, the fuel line is in. Um, I would. I want to install this lock, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it in. Usually the trucks come in, they don't have these, these locks in anymore. Okay. I'm asking, how does that work? <laughs> well, that's just like with my whips for my, my side by side. I'm like, I call them today because I talked to the lady last week and she's like, um, she said, oh, I, we don't have no ETA. And I'm like, well, I, I ordered, a, you know, a month in advance so I could have them. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. I'm like, okay. So then I, I give it a week. I call him today and I spoke to some other guy and I said, you know, I understand, you know, I understand how everything is. I, I feel you. But, you know, not, not even on their website does it say they're back over. Yeah. Well, they just and, and, they have. Yeah. yeah. And everything else that they have, there's some stuff that says, oh, it's on back order, but not the rock lights. Yes. Now. I didn't do it. Depends. When so has it been doing that since the batteries have been changed or anything like that? No, it just it just started. My son-in-law borrowed it for two months. Mm -hmm. his, his uh, expedition was having a transmission for it. And then he brought it back to me and says uh, uh, the batteries were dead. Something's draining the batteries. And I said, so I, 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 I jumped it, I got it started, and the batteries always work. You know, I just put the brand new batteries in there yeah. about three months ago. Yeah, I, the only thing I noticed, the battery cables, the negatives on both batteries were really loose. 
They were really loose, so we f I fixed them this morning. So hopefully that might have caused what you were experiencing. But every day I let the truck run out there, because um, he said it happened about 20, 30 miles yeah. driving. So I have that, that rod over there. I put it on the accelerator, 1500, 2000 RPM for like five hours. Go in there, tap on the computer, wiggle stuff. Nothing, yeah. I mean, the only thing that really can, I've, I've ever seen on the, the 7.3s cause that is like a bad cam sound. But it's usually when it gets hot, it'll throw a code. Um, but we'll just, we'll have to see. What's, I, he, what's his name in there, Dick? Dave. Dave, he says that I've been the world's record for codes. <laughs> yeah, almost. <laughs> I was like, oh. And it sucks because it, and it could be something in the computer because yours does have that chip in the back. Yeah. And I know you were saying something about Betty Sutherland. Yeah, Betty, something. Betty, when I told her that had a chip, she went, are you kidding me? So she pulled it out clean. All right, thanks a lot. You're welcome. You have a good day. Um, everything down there is good. And we're just going to put the, this back on. Hopefully you guys are wearing 3D glasses. Okay. Perfecto. And I'm almost done too. Okay. What happened? I'm almost done. Just, hey, do me a favor. Make sure that transmission's nice and clean on that side. Yeah, make sure it's clean and then start on the run. We got to change the lost it short again. Okay. Okie dokie. It was ready for the show. Ricardo's being very loud today. pretty crazy these things are I just don't want to get my camera saturated but hopefully you guys can I don't really know uh, yeah you can actually see it It's got a nice little show. Got all over my camera too. That's okay. That's the money shot right there.
because that's what a good one's supposed to look like. Okay. The exhaust is a little warm, but... And the fuel on the exhaust manifold is not bad. It's not ideal. It'll burn right off once they start it up. It's not like gasoline. You don't want to do that with gasoline. This is a diesel pickup truck. It runs on diesel. It's not going to hurt it. But if, it's, if that was gasoline, I would not do that. Because it would definitely catch on fire. Without a doubt. Okay, if you do do that, please be very careful. I might need a smaller wrench to do these. Okie dokie. Well, that is a good time. Okie dokie. Oh, my goodness. This tight, we're just gonna give her one more run. And then I did forget to put a piece of hose on that. I'm gonna just gonna zip tie that line to the uh, injector return, which I'm not too proud to do, but you gotta do it. Is it tight to that line? You gotta be very careful with these returns. These ones, since this truck's so new, it shouldn't hurt it, but you don't want to put too much tension on it because you'll you can break the injector. Which means it tight like that. I think that clip was already broken anyways, because when I took it apart it was already it was already off. You don't want zip tight to tiny metal because it'll just rub through. You know, get the center liner and pop that back in. Sure. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see. I kind of can't. So we're gonna get this sucker back together. It's a work truck, and I'm sure the customers love this thing. Go get back to work and feed their family. So we're gonna. Know if you guys can see, it's a little glaring. Here's my big head.
Yes. I'll look right now. Two go here. I thought it was going to, they don't though. You have to get some because then it won't, it won't, you know, stay locked in. The metal, are they metal or plastic? Plastic. What do actually have here? I'll have to look at it and see. Just so you don't lose track, you should always just do them in a while. Right there where it says full. Okay. Yeah. Just go ahead and get off the rack. Perfect. Go ahead and get off the rack. Make sure it's nice and clean and then we'll go drive it. Hey, just leave it up there real quick. Let me take a peek at it in one second. And now we're driving it just to make sure that diesel smell goes away. We get it all off the exhaust manifold. But truthfully, that code's not going to return for at least a couple hundred miles. It takes a while for it to run its test. So um, we know that the injector was, I shouldn't say the injector, the nozzle was definitely plugged. And I have seen that cause the P0430. Right? That's actually all I've ever seen cause that code is that injector gets, the injector nozzle gets plugged up and it doesn't put the correct amount of fuel in front of the cat because it sprays it right down after the turbo right into the front of the cat and it, I think it just cooks the cat to burn all the crap out of it but yeah so it should be fine but that's the problem with these new trucks is it you know there's really nothing you can do to make sure 100% that it is perfect when it leaves you know it's just you have to go by off your experience and you know, obviously we can think, thankfully you could actually see the part was bad. Like I showed you in the video, you can see the difference between the new and the old one. But, you know, it's crazy to see too. I've never, these trucks, I usually don't see them this low of mileage. 
This is probably one of the lowest miles Duramax I've ever had to work on. 68,000 miles for 2015. It's crazy. These trucks are generally quite reliable. Usually about 120, 150,000. That's when that injector usually plugs up. Sometimes around 200,000. Just really depends. But overall, these are definitely one of my most favorite diesel trucks. They just seem to be more robust. You know, obviously there are some other issues with them. But, you know, like the emission systems are... A nightmare. You know, truthfully, they do have probably one of the the worst emission systems on there. I should should I say? Uh, you know, it's one of the more the most one that I see with the most issues. You know, the dot. Unfortunately, I don't see very many dodges for the emission systems, but I see a lot of them for other issues like turbocharger failure and you know, timing cover leaks, EGR cooler failure, head gaskets on the six sevens. You know, they just they have a lot of issues. These trucks really don't have that kind of an issue it's mostly actually it's all just emission system you know like the EGR cooler bypass valve that's an emission system issue and those ones usually go bad you know 150 200 thousand miles and, but they're very expensive to replace which sucks you know, but ideally it'd be nice to have one of these trucks with none of that crap on it get rid of that CP4 and put a CP3 in it and it'd be just an amazing truck to have but unfortunately that's you know in California you can't get away with that kind of stuff but that would be nice you can only dream and this is actually I would think I would buy a 15 or 16 a GMC Sierra you know 3500 single rear wheel Denali and ideally get rid of the emission stuff but it's not really, it is actually federally illegal to get rid of that stuff. But, you know, it would be nice to get rid of that stuff if possible and then get rid of the CP4 and put a CP3 in it and you'd have an extremely reliable truck. I mean, these engines are, you know, quite reliable. Then the other trucks, whether the Power Stroke or the Cummins. Cummins have a lot of, especially the 6.7s, it's most of the 6.7s that have a lot of problems. You know, they have cracked cylinder heads, it's really common on those. Cylinder heads crack, the turbochargers, either they get stuck internally or the, the actuator goes bad, and those turbochargers are very expensive. And lately we've been having a hard time getting those parts, so we've had customers wait weeks, and I think one person had to wait a month for the turbo, because she didn't want to wait for it, you know, because if we pull the actuator off, then there's a potential for contamination in the actuator and then the truck is pretty much undrivable because it'll get if you don't take it off right if there's not enough coolant drained out of it it'll fill the actuator full of coolant and it'll actually short it out and if the turbocharger will be locked in its position whatever it is it'll just destroy the dpf so it's not ideal you know but so she just opted to replace the whole thing which is you know a good idea because you put the actuator on, we, that's what I used to do. We drain the coolant, pull the actuator, check the turbocharger vanes, see if they're nice and if they if they roll through smooth, if it rolls through smooth, I'm cool with putting an actuator on there. But I've had trucks 80,000 miles come in that the turbocharger locked up, and I mean they're only the trucks are only a few years old, and sometimes I've had them 100, 150,000 miles. You know, it's just the actuator that's bad, but the actuators are still stupid expensive. You know, but. I'm not very fond of those trucks, you know, but I'm not too fond of the, I'm a Chevy guy, but the newer Chevys, I don't know if I could own one. The, the engines, I think, are still really good. The transmission, I'm very concerned with because now it's a 10-speed Allison, and I think it's a GM-built transmission, which I do not like. Um, I'm not very fond of anybody building their own transmission you know the only one that's actually pretty good is the Ford one and behind the 67 that's actually a pretty good transmission um, I don't remember the exact code but I know there are a lot of issues with that one as well um, I've seen a lot of TSBs I had one truck come in that wouldn't get out of it would something was wrong with first gear I don't know if it's electrical or mechanical we really don't get into that kind of stuff um, but there was just a TSB to update the TCM so I did the TSB and it seemed to fix it, but I don't think that was it because it shifted really weird. But I mean, you can't beat an Allison. The Allisons are just the five and the six feet are just the best transmission you could possibly buy. You know, that's what unfortunately probably made the Duramax what it is today. If they didn't have the Allison, if they used the transmission like the Dodge, the, there wouldn't be so many sold. 
I mean, I wouldn't buy one if it had a GM transmission. GM can't build nothing themselves. I mean, you see the Acadias and the Traverses, even the 6L80 or 6L90s and the newer 1500s. Those transitions, horrible, for my opinion, but, you know. And I, I've seen, uh, I think in 2011 or so, they had a TSB where the filters would actually explode. I think it was a 6L90. It was the funky one with the TCM built inside the transmission. And I see those fit all the time. You know, I'm just, I'd rather just have a stout transmission. And unfortunately, it seems like the only way to get a stout transmission is buy a diesel. And, you know, but all trucks have problems. I'm just, uh, you know, if I had to buy a new truck, I'd probably buy a Ford. Like I said, I'm a Chevy guy. Just because the Fords are actually, they're pretty nice trucks. The engines aren't that bad. They're getting a lot better ever since they came out. At first, they were pretty bad. But they've gotten them down to where they're not that horrible. But I still love a Duramax. It's just that transmission I can't do. Can't, I, don't, I don't think I could live with that. Because these Allisons, I mean, they'll go... You know, I have one truck. The highest mileage truck I've ever worked on. I think the last time I worked on it had 690,000 miles. It's a 2004... Um, I think it's a, yeah, it's a Chevy Silverado 3500 uh, cabin chassis and I've been working on it since about 300,000 miles and never had an issue with the engine the transmission's original now granted it, it does have its problems it does have a uh, does have blown head gaskets and with the mileage I do not I'm not interested in doing head gaskets on that truck I told him we are putting an engine in it just because of the mileage um, he he wants to get the engine rebuilt, but I told him, we, we can do whatever he wants. It's just, per my opinion, I recommend to put the, uh, to replace the engine, you know, obviously. I told him just milk it as long as you can, because he might retire in a few years to see how much time he can get out. But he's been driving with a bone head gasket for the last, you know, a couple hundred thousand miles. He just keeps an eye on it and it seems to do okay. But I told him if we end up having to do something with the engine... Um, I do recommend replacing the transmission too, just because, you know, once you put that engine in there and you have some real power, because that engine's going to be back to what it was. And I mean, there's no real drivability issue with this truck whatsoever. It actually runs really good. Just the only thing you can tell is, um, if you put it into a haul mode, it does kind of shift a little rough. In that truck, it's been ran out of tranny fluid, because someone put a radiator in it and didn't get the clip in all the way. This is when I first started working on it, and he was driving on a base and one of the tranny cooler lines popped off and yeah so we put change the lines did all that stuff and that was a few hundred thousand miles ago and it's still running but yeah that's why i like chevys they're just i mean there's a lot of problems wrong with them too but i just like the engines and the transmissions but we got no codes like i said he's gonna have to drive it and see what happens but i'm fairly certain that it'll be perfect but unfortunately there's no way to tell until he drives it and sees what happens but we'll see you guys on the next one don't forget to like comment subscribe thanks